So last year I was pretty disappointed with my AS chemistry grade. I got a C grade and it was a subject I wanted to study at university so obviously I was pretty disappointed. Um, however, I did manage to pull up to an A grade this year and in this video I'm going to explain how. So like September time last year, I kind of really understood what my AS uh, UMS was. So it was 184 out of 300, so it was a really low C. So I needed to figure out which modules I wanted to reset. And in the end, I ended up resetting them all because it was again a low C. So there was no way I was going to get an A just by resetting one unit, I guess, because I would have to get really high UMS in the A2 modules and I wasn't really guaranteed to do that because I knew A2 was more difficult first of all and second of all I was also doing other subjects so I kind of needed to guarantee some UMS gains over the AS modules so I decided to retake all three. So just because I was resetting all three AS modules did not mean I could slack over the A2 so to speak. Just because I was going to gain some UMS over AS did not mean I could drop UMS over A2 so it could still average out. I still had to really nail the A2 part and that's basically the biggest thing I want to say in this video. Just because you're re resetting AS modules does not mean you can slack at A2. You still need to put in as much, you need to put in more work over A2 because A2 is more difficult and you need to put in more time and effort into A2. And that is what you need to prioritize your A2 studies first. So I'm going to start with what not to do because everyone's got different ways of revising and there's no black or white way on how to do it. However, I think what not to do is kind of more universal. So I'm going to start with that. Be careful with past papers. They'll be your best friend come exam time, but don't do them too early and likewise don't do them too late. Wait until you've fully covered all the content in your module, revise the module, and then attempt the past paper. This way you can get a realistic indication of where you're going to be when you do the actual exam. Leave one or two for when the exam's coming closer and then maybe do them all again because often you'll find that questions are regurgitated and the mark scheme answers are usually the same. So having those in your mind will be really, really useful in case one of the questions comes up again. Second point is don't sell yourself dreams when you're marking past papers. First of all, this doesn't help anything because you're not really highlighting that you've made a mistake. So you'll probably make the same mistake again. And second of all, you're going to end up inflating your current grade or on the past papers. So you're going to get, again, tell yourself to dreams out where your current whereabouts is. Third thing is don't spend too long revising or learning irrelevant points in the textbook. You'll find that in the official textbooks, they've, all, they've always got these how science works sections and they're really long, um, but don't spend too much time making notes and memorizing that stuff because it's not really going to be tested on in the exam. It's usually just there to give you a scientific context behind the application of the particular topic and again it's not going to come up in the exam for the most part. Make sure you really understand your specification and know what you need to know. Don't waste your time learning irrelevant facts that aren't on the specification. So now that I've explained what not to do, I'm going to explain exactly what I did outside of lesson. First thing was I made notes from chemrevise.org. There's PDFs on every single topic in all of AS and A2 chemistry for most major exam boards. So I loaded them up, read through them, and then really tried to understand and grasp what's going on rather than just reading and copying them out. So once I'd understood them, I made notes, and then I decided to watch some videos. My two favorite channels were e Rintoul and Tywin Lanster. Again, they both covered most of the AQA, AS and A2 specifications, so not only did I have resources to read from, I also had resources to watch and kind of explain stuff to me. I then went on alevelchemistry.co.uk, there's hundreds and hundreds of practice questions that aren't from the current past papers, so it's a really good place to just practice your knowledge and apply it, especially for calculations because you need to just keep practicing them. They seem hard at first, but once you get them, they're pretty easy. So once I've done all of this for all of Chem 4, Chem 5, wherever, this is when I started to do past papers because I'd finished the entire specification, I'd revised it well and I'd done practice questions so I could now attempt past papers and then not waste them because I could find a true indication of where I was. So alongside all the notes I made, all the videos and all the practice questions, I used a flashcard app called Anki. I felt as though using this is better than using conventional physical flashcards because you can always carry your all of your decks all at once in your phone rather than having to carry loads of flashcards in you on you so you can kind of revise when you're on the bus wherever without having to go through the hassle of keeping things on you other than your phone and also you can kind of share your decks so one person can make a deck and then you can share it likewise making your own decks is a good form of revision itself so that's pretty much what i did for a2 side of the whole year however i did have three as modules to reset and i did approach these slightly differently because after you do A2, the AS content becomes kind of easy and menial because you really need to understand the AS content first to then do well at A2. 
So after I'd done A2, the AS content did seem much easier, so all I needed to really work on was the exam technique. Again, going back to A2 making AS slightly easier, for example, a lot of the calculations in Chem 4 and Chem 5 will make the stuff in Chem 1 and Chem 2 very easy. Likewise with the organic in Chem 4, you need to know all of the stuff in Chem 2 very well to do well at Chem 4. So what I did for the research was basically just go over the content again because there's lots of like little small house science work stuff that I'd forgotten from last year revised that, made some notes, um, looked at the Anki decks for those, went through them and then just did past papers. It didn't require that much time because again all the content was kind of fresh in my mind just from doing A2 so I did some past papers and revised using Anki. I started revising for the resets in early May so Chem 1 would have been just in the middle of May so I started beginning of May likewise Chem 2 was just after the half term. So most of my Chem 2 revision was done during that half term and I had already sat the ISA back in April so by default, my AS UMS had already gone up, just shot up because my ISA went from 28 to 54. I think a really good way to test your understanding of a topic is to explain it to somebody else. Because if you can explain something to somebody else and then they end up understanding that topic, that means you truly do understand that topic. And this is where I suggest you get into kind of groups and revise together. So this could be in the form of a WhatsApp group or just study groups or whatever. So as long as you're not wasting your time, this can be a really productive form of revision. Now I was part of a WhatsApp group uh, for chemistry and this was basically one of the most useful resources I had throughout the year. Essentially if I got stuck on a question I could just take a photo, send it straight to the group and get replies instantly. Likewise when people ask questions in the group I could explain it which really did help my understanding. Uh, so yeah big big shout out to the chemistry group, been very helpful to me so massive salute to you guys. So hopefully I've covered everything in this video um, in terms of what not to do, what to do and how to be proactive about your revision. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.